So this is about the latest thing that is happening in this area and it is called Network Function Virtualization, NFV. So in this lecture we will talk about what is NFD, how it relates to SDN and what are the specifications that have been developed. So but before I go into the into the thing, you know, basically the some of this is actually already coming from one of the specs called architecture specs. Some of the names that you will hear when you go to NFD is first of all NF is the network function. Right? So a network function basically is the block building block which has well defined interfaces and well defined functional behavior. So this you could call a service. We gave a whole list of network functions in the previous slide. Now remember that SG, SN, CG, SN, and so on and so forth. Those are all network functions that they do right now physically, but now later on they will become virtual. So virtualized network function is VNF. So the word VNF is used for virtualized network function, the software implementation of NF, and then they have VNF set. So you might need not just one function, you might need a whole set of functions. For example, if you want to do the router, you might need DNS, you might need um, DSTP and so on and so forth. So you take a whole set of functions and if they have no connectivity specified, then that is a set. If the connectivity is specified, then it is a forwarding graph. So forwarding graph basically is a connected graph of DNS, where you say, well, when the packets come in, they go to this function one, from there they go to function two and so on and so forth. In fact, the next slide will show you the graph. So, so for example, connectivity is important in cases, cases like firewall, NAT, and load balancer. You cannot just do it in any, any order. You have to do it in particular order. And then NFVI is the NFV infrastructure. So that's the hardware and the software that you need to manage and deploy these DNS. Okay, that includes computation, networking, and storage. So NFVI is the is the bottom thing basically bottom bottom. I mean, software is actually not the bottom, but hardware and and networking, and then you need the software on the top of it. So the, all of that is NFVI. Now here is the graph. So what this graph is showing is that you need three functions: DNF one, DNF two, DNF three, and uh, they have to be in this order as shown here. Uh, it's it's possible that you can have DNF two three different modules implementing it um, and they are connected so we have put them into in, into a box again and you just need one of them and so there must be some way to select one of them so that is what is shown here is that you have three implementation of DNF2, you have one implementation of DNF1 and one implementation of DNF3 and they are connected in this order. So this is a DNF forwarding graph. Continuing on the concepts, you have NFVI points of presence. So carriers already have POPs. POPs are points of presence, are the buildings where they keep their, their hardware. And so this would be NFVI POP, would be where they will have the NF function, I mean virtual functions there. And the NFVI POP network is inside network. Transport network is the network that connects the POPs. And then VNF manager. So just like um, basically the um, so basically there is some entity which does the life cycle management. Now, now, now the life cycle I think we have used before, but I just want to make sure that you understand it very well. This is a very common term that is used. Life cycle management means that you should be able to instantiate between provision, update, change, scale, make more query, find out, vary and monitor it, and call diagnosis, healing, termination. So when you have any service. You need to be able to provision it, reprovision it, and if it becomes bad, to, to repair it and then bring it back and then you know fill it, you know when you don't need it. So all of that is called life cycle management. And for life cycle management, you need a manager. So there is a DNS manager. Then you need the infrastructure manager, which does similar things for things which are not DNS. So for the storage, network software resources. So so it is quite possible that the tenants do the DNF management while the while the supplier of the hardware, the cloud company, might do the DI <coughs> management. There is a network service which is basically a composition of functions. So basically when you take a, a whole set of modules, you make a service 
and then basically if you virtualize it, then it becomes NFD service. User services are the ones that are offered end to end. So now some services will be visible to the user and most of them will not be visible to the user. For example, when you have base station, I don't think the user sees the base station. All they see is a signal coming to them. So they to, and so they may not even see whether it is virtual or real or anything to worry about that. But there are some services which reach the user and so the, those services are called user services. Deployment behavior. So for each resource, you have to specify what do you need for deployment? So what are the resources that you need? Uh, what, how many VMs you need? How much memory do you need? How much this, how, what images do you need? What bandwidth do you need? And what latency you need? So all of this, is when you specify, that is called the deployment behavior. Another behavior you need to specify is the operational behavior, where um, basically how to do all of this, start, stop, pause, migrate, and the virtual machine, virtual machine. So once you have deployed it, then um, uh, how do you operate, all right? So those are the two behaviors you have to specify for each VNF. VNF descriptor is combination of those two. So if you have the operational behavior and the deployment behavior, you get the combination, which is the descriptor. Orchestrator, as you can imagine, is basically a, a, a software piece that can automate the whole thing, automate the deployment, Automate the operation, management, coordination of both VNS and MFDI. And then the forwarding graph, actually, I think we already talked about. So that is done. Um, let's see. Next. Okay. So that's basically the concept. NFD is not a framework, which is not correct, actually. If I said that, that is wrong. NFD is a framework. Uh, and then you said that uh, it is to virtualize the data part of the backhaul, which is correct. I mean, you can virtualize, but it is not just the data part or the control part. It can be, you can virtualize the control part as well. You can virtualize the data part. You can virtualize not just the backhaul. You can virtualize end to end. So, so basically, NFD is very general. Actually, and I, when I'm thinking about it, and I'm basically giving a lecture today about this at this conference where I am, is that um, it is not just related to carriers. Why is it why is it limited to carriers? You can do, anybody can do whatever they need to do, they should just go with the NFD method. Network function virtualization could just, if you remove the word N from there, you could be a function virtualization and uh, that would be helpful to anybody for any function. Right? So it's not limited to backhaul. Right now the carriers are thinking about some of the functions that we listed their backhaul functions. But they could, they are going all the way. If you go back to the picture here, first picture, they are going all the way to the what they call residential gateway and set up boxes. I don't think those will qualify as backhaul. Okay, I am going to stop right there. You said, does it need a centralized control? I never talked about any control data plane separation here. We did not talk about centralized control. We did not talk about anything. This is the whole beauty of NFB. NFD does not talk about any of those mechanisms that we had talked about earlier. It does not require open source, it does not require SDN, it does not require data plane control plane separation, and you can keep all of them together as they are. All you need to do is to virtualize, period, done. Yeah, so this is actually, the idea of NFD came because people said, oh, we can do all of this on a standard hardware, but that's all you need. Once you can do on a standard hardware, you can do a lot of stuff. That, that covers a lot of stuff. Okay, all right, so let's go back to where we were, concept. So here is the architecture diagram. Basically, um, you have the hardware in the bottom on the left. You have computing hardware, storage hardware, and network hardware. You put some kind of virtualization layer, which is kind of hypervisor. And, um, and you know, basically, so the, the two things which are shown there, you know, virtual computing, virtual storage, virtual network, and all of that, that is all hypervisor and we can call it NFDI. This is the infrastructure that you need. On the top of that, you have virtual machines, which are shown even a little bit on the top, VNF1, VNF2, VNF3. For each, you could also have the management system there. And all of these are virtual, as you can see by the dotted line. And then you could have the management system, operation support system, they call it. Um, and so OSS is there on the top of that. And on the right side, you have the management and orchestration volume and, and modules. 
So you have first the bottom layer, which is the virtualized infrastructure manager. Then in the middle, you have DNS manager. Then on the top, you have orchestration. So these are all different modules, and um, they can um, basically do their part by talking to other parts. So one of the things that the carriers always do in a diagram like this is that they want to specify very clear interfaces. If you remember UNI and NNI, those were network to network interfaces and user to network interfaces. Similarly, here in NSB, they are specifying interfaces, and there are nine interfaces that have been identified so far. And so those are shown by those cross lines. For example, on the top, you have OS dash and A. That's an interface that goes between the orchestration system and the operation support system. There is SE dot NA. That is the one that goes, you know, to produces some description of DNF and so on so forth. So there are, you can count, there are nine of them, and I'm going to list them in the next slide. But basically, so those are interfaces. There are some interfaces which are kind, kind of soft, and those are shown by dotted line. So you have a dotted line in between OSS and EMS, and between the EMS and the DNS. And so those dotted lines, um, are um, other reference points which um, which may not be specified at least not in the beginning and may not be even be required because you may just have proprietary interfaces there. And then um, the 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 little circles they just specify the execution point reference point. All right, so they are going to work on specifying these reference uh, IS what we call yeah, um, the the reference points. So there are nine of them. Virtualization layer to hardware resources. You need some kind of uh, standardization there. It's called BIHA. DNS to NFDI, which is the DNNF. Orchestrator to DNS manager is ORDNFM, and so on and so forth. I mean, you can read it as well. Um, right now, these are not there, so there's not much to say about these. But um, once we have specified these interfaces, then you can take modules, let's say you can take any orchestration module and work with any DNF manager if you have the interface between the, between the, you have the ORF, ORB and FM interface. So these interfaces will be specified someday and then you will be able to mix and match. Right now in the beginning what will happen is that people will have probably the modules from one, one company or a set of companies that have already demonstrated compatibility and then slowly these interfaces will appear. Okay, so that is the reference architecture document that um, you can download and uh, basically you can read about that. Um, then what was, there's a requirement document which talks about what do we really need from DNS. And so all the DNS should be general, portable, high performance, scalable, high reliability, secure, and should be able to work after failure. I mean, these are very Apple Pie and motherhood, you know, good things that you should always want. And so there is nothing special here. Um, basically, that's what, um, I mean, I we could even include, this is a list of seven, um, but um, some of this is not, for example, some of this is missing here, you know, for example, in, if you go back to about 10, list of 10, what we need from NSB, Beginning, some of the things I'm missing here, for example, orchestration, or automation, uh, uh, you know, our openness, those things are not specified in this list. So someday those may get in here, but, you know, basically these are what you would expect from any service. So I'm moving on to the framework, oh, sorry, actually there are this continuous from, it's not seven, there are 11 total. So, so let's see, service assurance, so that you should be able to basically monitor, sign stamp, as to what happened. Energy efficiency, you should be able to reduce the energy consumption by moving the VMs around. Transition, you should be able to live with the legacy. So you might have a mixture of virtual and real device with real modules. And then um, you should be able to use infrastructure from a separate company than the first company running DNS. So basically the idea is that hardware may belong to one company and while the DNS may belong to other companies, one company may offer the DNS as a service to other companies. So, which is really a nice uh, business model. I think that will really do a lot in terms of um, in terms of career growth because then um, 
when the people who are managing the infrastructure don't have to worry about the customer, the customer can be handled by another company that knows how to handle the customer but not how to worry about the infrastructure. So with DNS, all that will come in. So use cases is another document from FC. And basically what it says is these use cases is example applications. So this is not in any sense comprehensive or complete or exclusive list. This is some of the things that you know we can already see as to where NFB can be used. So for example, NFB as a service we already talked about a minute ago, somebody can offer an infrastructure as a service and other companies can use that to offer services to the user. Somebody can offer VNF as a service. So they could just be operating, you know, for example, a base station, or they could be operating just a NAT, or they could be operating something different. And so that would be a DNF as a service. Somebody could be offering a whole service chain, you know, a whole set of services connected together. Somebody could be offering platform as a service, virtual network platform as a service. So you basically get most of the things and then you put your functions on the top of it. Mobile. In the mobile domain, you could do the core network, a backhaul network, like you said, and IMS, which is the IT multimedia system. You could then um, virtualize that. You could virtualize the base station. In the data centers, you could virtualize the content distribution network, CDN. In the access and residential, you could virtualize the home environment, or you could virtualize the fixed access. So you know the difference between fixed access is basically fixed access is where the, the user doesn't move, such as the home DSL or even the home wireless. So there are many companies that are offering uh, access via wireless, and so there will be fixed access. As opposed to mobile access, mobile access is the cellular access. These are all example cases where virtualization can be used. So now proof of concept. Basically, um, HC has found a group whose job is to somehow prove that whatever they are thinking about is correct. And so people have started implementing. And so six of these projects which are shown on this list have already been demonstrated by different companies. For example, British Telecom has, de has demonstrated a virtual broadband remote access server, DRAS. Basically, um, when you have a broadband service, just like you have a DSL at home, you need a server at the carrier office. And so they have demonstrated how they can virtualize that service, that, that part function. Deutsche Telekom, German Telekom has demonstrated how you can do IT multimedia system. Evolved Packet 4, which is basically the backhaul like we talked about, um, has been demonstrated by Orange Silicon Valley. Carrier grade network address translator and DTI and home gateway by Telefonica. Session border controllers from MetaSwitch and deep packet inspection from Postera. Basically, deep packet inspection is nothing but, you know, if you want to really look at the packet and then, you know, say, well, these packets will not be going, you can look at all the way up to the application layer header and drop the packets and all that. So that is like a firewall by Postera. Now, most of these are based upon cloud technology, easy open stack. So basically, when you use any of these, you really have to do it on a cloud. When you do any virtualization, generally, you do on a cloud anyway. So there is a whole um, um, set of people who are working as to how to do with the cloud as well. Well, that brings us to the end of this module. And um, so the summary, five key points for NFD. First. NFV aims to reduce the operational expenses by automation and scalability provided by virtualization. That's all their goal is. They're not trying out, they're not talking about the control plane, data plane, or anything. All they're talking about the virtualization. All right, they're not talking about SDN, they're not talking about new protocols or changing anything. They're just saying that whatever we have in hardware, we should do that in virtual appliances. Very simple concept. NFV allows all the benefits of virtualization and cloud computing, including orchestration, scaling, automation, hardware independence, safe for use, fault tolerance, everything that we talked about, all those 10 things can be done with NFV. And they can be done now. NFV and SDN are independent. 
and complementary. So you can do both or either. So you know you can do NFD and you can do SDN. You know basically if you were to do SDN, then you will need to separate the controls. And if you wanted to do that, they have SDN. But you know so the thing is, SDN is um, is does not. I mean basically SDN and NFD are in, in some sense complementary, right? NFD requires a simulation of reference points and interfaces so that you can mix and match DNS from different sources. So that's what we need is the reference point. And those interfaces are double reference points. NFD can be done now, and some of the virtual functions have already been demonstrated. So we already seen five or six proof of concept. So it's here. All right. So that's the end of NFD. In terms of reading list, most of it is at FC. And they are pretty readable. So you can go to the website and download the five specs. There is something else at the SGM Central. So there are a few articles at the SGM Central that I found very interesting. And then Cloud MFB is basically is a project and it's project here, what is another project which are trying to do the same things on the cloud and so on. So that's the end.